That's one of the things. And okay. See where it takes us. All right. Yeah, tell me, tell me, what is it you do? What what is the the kind of profession you're in? What is it you're all about? <laughs> oh, you might call it a profession or a vocation or whatever it is, but. It's a way of life, of uh, living with people and seeing to their well-being, whether it's mentally, physically, or otherwise. Try to make fe people feel good. How do you do it? Oh, well, there are many ways of making you feel good. You know, like I, I speak to uh, Kiwanis clubs and Chamber of Commerce, and. Uh, but in your role as a medicine man, yeah, how does one go about? administering to the needs of people. It's, uh, it's according to the repertoire of techniques that you have to fit the situation. Sometimes you might have to use herbs, sometimes barks and leaves, or just a chant, or you might have to touch somewhere on the body and or remove some foreign object from the body. and. Uh, there are many, many techniques, you know, using live coals, fans, and use cedar, sage, or sweet grass to fan people off, and, and, or maybe they just need a certain kind of uh, conversation to change certain attitudes they carry around, and uh, it just depends on the kind of needs that each, each person has. You have something that fits that need, so that's what, that's what you do, you know. Let me ask you, what did, what did you do up in Colorado? What was that all about? Uh, they asked me to uh, open the ski season for them weather-wise, and so I told them that I would appeal to the Great Spirit for the kind of weather they wanted, and so I went through my special ceremony that I have in order to communicate to the Great Spirit. And the results was the way they wanted it. I hope they still want it. I think it's still snowing yet. <laughs> Did you make it snow? I didn't. I didn't make anything. I just made an appeal. I, I can't make anything. I don't take credit for whatever the Great Spirit does. But I give credit to my teachers that taught me certain ways to do it. and. And it's my job to uh, be honest with the trust they gave me by entrusting certain powers, knowledge of these things that I dispense from time to time. I have never, never done anything snow-wise before. This was my first time, and yet uh, it didn't bother me. I didn't worry about it. I just knew that it would, it was going to be that way. So I just. Went over there and did my thing and came back. You were you were confident it was going to snow. Yes, uh, not in myself. I'm confident in the one that provides snow, provides all weather. And who's that? And that's the Creator. You know, he's never made uh, any failures. And uh, if there I had any doubts, why well, that would have been within me. But I don't doubt His ability. So. So your role in that is is just communicating a wish. I'm from sort of a mediator. But there are certain ways that you employ to do these things, and that's where the sacred things come into play. And I don't play around with it and just use it just and abuse it. I've had calls from, after that incident, I had calls from different states, but I'm not really in that business. I'm not, in fact, I didn't. You're not a weatherman. I'm not a weatherman, and, and I wasn't after publicity either. I, I don't advertise myself. I don't, I don't say I'm a big medicine man and go around doing this and that. I, I don't call myself a healer. I'm not a healer. And uh, people can call me medicine man if they want to, but I don't go around calling myself that. A lot of people maybe would see that and think, you know, in this day and age when you've got, you've got religious leaders getting found for taking money from somebody or, or embezzling this or embezzling that, you know, mm -hmm. you gotta, I think people doubt religious figures or people with certain, you know, yeah. that seem to have certain powers. You're not like that. Well, I, I don't like to compare myself with anyone Excuse else. Me, just, I, one, just one second. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. 
Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like to compare myself with anyone else, and, uh, or if they're in the healing arts. I'm not in competition with anyone as long as they help people. That's okay with me. If I'm asked to help, then I do my thing. I don't. Uh, it's not our business to judge one another and to point a finger of scorn at one another. Our teaching traditionally, they used to say, never point a finger of scorn at your fellow men. When you do that, there's three of them pointing back at you. You might be three times worse than the one you're pointing at, so be careful. <laughs> That's part of our teachings. You say you know that you possess powers. Tell me what can you? I don't. Do those translate. I you tell take me what care they are? of powers. I'm a caretaker. I don't possess. It's not mine. I'm just handling it till the need comes, and I dispense it to fit that particular need, and that's about it. The. Uh, you say you're not a healer. But no. you can be called in and you can help people. Well, uh, I would rather be referred to as a spiritual leader. That, that's, that covers a lot of things. And the uh, creator that I believe in is the one that heals. He's the one that created. He's the one that makes it. He's the one that gives life to us. And so that's, he's the only one that empowered and can heal. And so that's why I don't take credit for healing that's done. I just thank the Great Spirit for his, you know, healing certain people and... Or providing that, certain weather. Yeah, or providing certain weather. I gave thanks after I came back and after I made my trip home safely and, and uh, gave thanks in my own private way, you know. And uh, I've been taught to always say thank you, you know, for, for everything. Even when in adverse conditions, maybe you got sick and almost died, they say, be grateful. And they say, why? If you're going to help somebody that's sick and you've never been sick before, how can you have compassion unless you've, been, you've had that experience? Then you can go and you know how that person feels. So it's not just a matter of technique alone, it's the rapport that you gain through the caring of your very being into the life of this person and you maintain a certain relationship there as you dispense with these other things. How does one go about becoming a medicine man? There are many, many techniques, many, many tribes, different uh, techniques are involved. And How did you become a medicine man? I was chosen. I didn't choose to be one. and I never asked anyone. But the two elders of my tribe, one came to me and offered to teach me his ways, and I accepted. And a little later on, another one came. And between the two, I trained for 14 years to learn what I know now. And it's not complete. There's many, many things yet to be learned. And but both of them are gone on, and so what's left for me to do is to do my own thing. Where did they get it? They fasted, they communicated directly. So that's what I need to do, is to do a lot of fasting and communicating to find out a lot of things. We didn't have as near as many diseases among our group until the population increased and different cultures coming in and new illnesses, new sicknesses caused by different things and if uh, we're not like the ones you know if we don't know anything what's ailing you we call it a virus <laughs> uh, or you hear it called a virus we, we don't go around doing that we try to learn what what causes this we try to treat the cause not the effect <laughs>